Again, if you're not asking a question, please mute your phone so we're not getting any background noise. Thank you. <coughs> go, ahead. go ahead, Theo. Uh, Anthony was actual player of the week for, for the second time in three years. Is, is, is he doing anything uh, kind of that, you, that maybe you didn't expect him to do so well uh, three weeks into the year? Anything that you didn't necessarily see as much here during camp or here during spring camp? I, I think he needs to improve like everybody else we have. But the biggest thing that um, uh, he does a pretty good job of getting on track uh, pretty quickly. I think he's a pretty quick uh, evaluator, uh, self-evaluator, and he can get himself on track if he – you know, because he certainly went perfect last game, but uh, if something doesn't go right, uh, he didn't beat himself up. He didn't go through some of that pouty mopey stuff, which really drives me crazy when players do that. Um, and then uh, uh, I, I think that, that uh, he's able to get back on track really fast, which I think is an incredible strength, and also I think it rubs off on the other players. You got a taunting penalty after one of those touchdowns. Do you kind of like your quarterback to be a little chippy out there and kind of talk back and forth with the defense and have an edge to him? Well, I can't comment on it, but I have my own opinions about uh, what took place there. So, um, but uh, you know, um, you know, I I, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, I didn't see anything take place, but. Uh, but uh, I'm not commenting on any officiating. I'm just saying I didn't see anything take place. Gordon's going to have a lot of opportunities in the passing game. UCLA allows, I think, about 10 point something yards per pass attempt. Uh, what do you expect out of him in this next game? I think, uh, I think they're an extremely talented team. I think that. Uh, <coughs> I think uh, I think they're an extremely talented team. I think they're better than they've been playing. I think that. Uh, because uh, I know a great deal about their players. We recruited a lot of them. And um, I just don't think they're playing together as well as they'd like to right now. But that can happen at any time, and it can happen overnight. And uh, as soon as they do, they're an extremely dangerous team. How do you like the challenge with your run defense and their, I mean, it's Chip Kelly. They don't, they're not running great right now, but is it something you always have to be prepared for when you're going against the Chip Kelly offense? Yeah, they'll run it, they'll mix it up, and they try to uh, spread it out to create space of their own. They utilize it a little different than we do. Um, you know, they're going to uh, run and kind of pop pass it in there some. But, uh, but you know, uh, they've, uh, he's had a lot of success over the years. And, uh, and uh, you know, nobody over there has forgotten how to coach. And I, know, and I, I personally uh, know that they have a good nucleus of players. So, you know. Uh, uh, but if they if they get on track and they're playing as well as they can this week, we have to be ready. Just kind of going back to the Houston game momentarily, you guys played a very different second half, especially offensively. What was there anything extra that you that you saw after being able to see the film um, that you might have liked even more than what you saw in person? Well, the biggest thing we just relaxed at halftime. You know, we were went out there and everybody was highly motivated and. Um, Sometimes some of the older players, you know, were the ones that really tried to make too much happen. And then when we relaxed and settled down, we played a lot better. Um, UCLA defense uh, just gave up over 300 yards on the ground uh, this past week. Is that something you think you can exploit uh, on Saturday night? I hope so. We'll see. Um, a lot of those were runs by the quarterback, but uh, we'll, have, we'll have to just, uh, we'll try. Chip Kelly was quoted saying, "If in an ideal world you would run every single play out of the wishbone, maybe if you were playing Madden, do you have an opinion on that?" I think it's a really good offense. I think the wishbone's a really good offense. Nobody's really stopped it. As a matter of fact, when the Air Force broke into it this last uh, this last week, you know, all of a sudden off they went. You know, so uh, no, I think it's a great offense. I think it's a lot like our offense. You know, it's on the ground, but. Uh, you know, it's about distribution, everybody touching the ball and, you know, just creating space and windows, you know. So, um, yeah, I think uh, I think it's a really good offense. Hopefully they don't get it dispelled uh, by the time they play us. Did you take an interest in what Chip was doing when, when he was at Oregon and started introducing a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that, that made them so successful? And did you, did you steal anything from, from him? I know you guys run different offenses, but I know a lot of coaches take things from one another. Uh, you know, we were both spread guys. We're both spread guys. Um, 
And not really, because uh, we were already spreading it out. And then, but he spreads it out to run it. And, you know, like I say, screens and quick little passes. And then, um, you know, we spread it out to, to throw it. So, you know, typically we throw it. Um, and then, uh, I will say this, he got a lot of people going fast. He, I mean, a lot of people started doing that tempo stuff. Uh, we stayed about the same. Uh, our, our notions on tempo came quite a ways back. Uh, the Buffalo Bills used to always, when Jim Kelly was there, they always, uh, you know, they wouldn't huddle and they would, uh, they're kind of quick without hurrying, you know, quicker than most teams, but it wasn't, it wasn't two minute, but it was faster than huddling. And we kind of stuck with that, to be honest with you. Um, but he got a lot of people hurrying up. Uh, and I think, uh, I think Chip Kelly uh, impacted defenses uh, more than he did our offense, but he definitely had an impact on some offenses. Had you guys met before you guys were both in the same conference and started going to the conference meetings together and media day and whatnot? Did you know him before then? Well, yeah, but we weren't real familiar with one another. Uh, Matt, I think, would be about the extent of it. Uh, this time last week, we were asking you about the short week. Um, now we get to ask you about the long week. How much does it help just having that extra day to prepare? Uh, not much. You know, because uh, we get back at what five in the morning from the Houston game, and so Saturday's pretty well uh, spent recovering. You know, so uh, on the front end of the week, you race into all your meetings and preparation, and then you get back at five in the morning. And so, uh, you know, really, I think our guys caught up on sleep, stuff like that, and then it was kind of Sunday as usual. Northern Colorado ran the ball a lot. Houston ran the ball a lot. You're about to play another team that runs the ball a pretty decent amount. What can you carry over from the last two games that you can use in this one? Uh, play like we did the second half of the Houston game other than the last drive. I mean, conference play now, finally, 3-0. Does that give you guys any extra confidence other than you know being a 2-1 and one or 1-2? One uh, I, I guess the biggest thing that, that I feel good about is we, uh, uh, I felt like we've gotten a week better each week. I think each week uh, uh, we've improved. And so, uh, you know, that's the biggest thing. So we have to get a week better this week. If we can take another step this week, I think that'd be huge. UCLA's been turning over the ball a pretty decent amount through their first three games. What have you been telling your defense going into that matchup? Well, we've been getting turnovers. We need to keep that up, though. Um, actually, uh, I think we lead the conference in turnover ratio, so we need to keep getting turnovers and keep taking care of the football. Any questions on the phone line for Coach Leach? Uh, Coach Leach, this is Ben Ball for the Los Angeles Times. Uh, a question for you about the Chip Kelly Blur offense from Oregon. Do you think that that could still work in the Pac-12 in, in 2019? Yeah, I think, well, I think elements of it still are, you know. I think people have borrowed uh, plays from it and things like that. So I think there's portions of it that still are. Uh, I also think sometimes you get kind of, uh, I don't know what a perfect storm is, but whatever that is, you get, uh, um, you know, the right quarterback, the right, uh, uh, really the whole team just gets in a rhythm. You know, everybody's in a rhythm and uh, simultaneously uh, doing things, and uh, the play of one complements the play of another, and and um, you know you capture it for a period of time. Uh, I I can't say that people have really quite done that, but um, but I do think uh, people have borrowed some elements of his offense, and uh, and it's benefited them. Another question for you. Uh, I'm a big fan of Henry Winkler, but I've not seen the Water Boys. So I was wondering, uh, with your your tweet about the uh, Dorian uh, fakes to the left, can you tell me what that was uh, about? Well, you have to see the movie. I don't want to wreck the movie, and I like the movie. Don't love the movie, but a lot of people in football love the movie. And football movies, under the best of circumstances, are very difficult. I think the best one is Friday Night Lights. Um, but, um, 
And the difficulty, of course, is because you've got 12 people or 11 people running 11 different directions, and then 22 ultimately, uh, if there's a defense on the field and they're running around with helmets on, so you can't even see their faces. So it's difficult to really tell the story in a slow, intimate fashion. However, uh, you know, uh, Waterboy is uh, certainly, uh, I would say it's the thinking man's. Uh, football movie of the ages um, and, uh, and really I think everybody should watch it. So, so that wasn't a reference to Dorian Thompson Robinson? Uh, no. Okay, thank you. Any other questions on the phone line for Coach? Yeah, Matt Hawkins. Matt Hawkins, I have a time. So there's a bill uh, in California that got discovered at desk that uh, basically would allow uh, college athletes to get paid for their likeness, endorsements, and whatnot. Um, have you given any thoughts or do you have any thoughts on, on what that might be for, for college sports or just that, that proposal in general? Uh, well, I, I think there's a lot of stuff, and I'll let the lawyers kind of flesh that out. but. Um, I do think if everybody's not given the, uh, you know, if, if everybody's not, uh, um, in other words, you, if you create a recruiting advantage uh, beyond what already exists, I think it's going to be very difficult. I think there'll be a huge imbalance and you'll destroy college football. And I think they ought to be very careful of that. And, uh, and the other thing, if you can do stuff like that, I mean, surely if, uh, and, you know, if you don't like the way the guy's uh, portraying something, uh, you should be able to cut him on the spot pretty much, I would think. And then, of course, uh, then are we going to have a draft? Then are we going to have uh, trading? Then are we going to have free agency? I mean, how far does all this stuff go? So I think we ought to be careful with that. Or maybe we ought to just have minor league football and then have minor, go ahead and have minor league football and, and then those guys can do whatever they want, you know? But the state of California has trouble keeping their streets clean right now. So my thought is, is that they probably ought to focus on that. That's just one guy's opinion, and I'm sure I'm probably wrong. But um, you know, but at the at the, the rate that California is handling their infrastructure and some of their other problems, um, uh, you know, I I think that uh, uh, we'll see how they do with that before. Um, uh, I really think it would be that beneficial for the legislature of California to enter into college football. And uh, if you see benefits to them entering into college football, I'd love to hear because they seem to be determined to do it. Thank you, Coach. Hey, Coach, coming kind off of the Seattle Times, I was curious, how confident were you that your team would bounce back and play a better second half last week? Um, I was I was pretty confident, you know. I mean, uh, well, there's two things. One, this isn't really a business for realistic people to begin with. Otherwise, um, you don't achieve uh, at a high level, you know. So, uh, uh, but the the other thing is, is we are a very dedicated group. We worked extremely hard, and and we are a team that um, things weren't unfolding quite our way. But you know, we were pushing hard, trying hard. We just weren't a very synchronized group. And, um, and uh, well, as we, uh, be, you know, it, it, I, I did feel like if, if we played together and were synchronized, that we'd be awfully tough to stop and they'd have a tough time moving the ball. And then it turned out that that was the case. Thank you. Any other questions so, on the phone? Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Hi, this is Susie Miller with the LA Daily News. Uh, UCLA got to Millie in the second year under Chip Kelly, and they struggled a little bit to start. But what challenges do you remember when you took over this job at Washington State, and how did you handle some of those trying to kind of build your program? You know, that's tough because, uh, um, and of course, we have a bunch of reporters here that are knowledgeable and know more about the history of Washington State than I do in a lot of instances. But Washington State had been to a bowl in how many years? 67. No, that was the wrong stuff. Wait, how many years since Washington State have been to a bowl? 2003. So it's been a long time, you see. And so it's been a really long time since they've been to a bowl. And, and so we did have quite a few uh, 
tolls to fill. One thing that, that I think is challenging is the mentality, you know, just getting people that are truly committed to the, uh, the work and the commitment that uh, is necessary. Um, because there's a point to where, you know, if, if you try to win to a point and, and then it's, it's not working out, uh, things can quickly evolve to a social club. You know, in other words, um, where, I don't know how to describe it, where guys don't care as much about the achievement as they do everybody being happy and the social aspects, uh, they get more f fulfillment from the social aspects, hanging out together, doing things together than they do achieving together because they've fallen short on the achievement thing. And there's a, and achievement's far more rewarding, but an achievement takes uh, a great deal of effort and is, and is extremely difficult. And, um, uh, but the effort and the solidarity that you draw from working together extremely hard is rewarding and unforgettable, but it is hard. And, um, and so getting over that hump between social and hard and the rewards at the end, I think is, uh, is, is one of the toughest parts. And then, so you're kind of converting one player at a time until they start converting each other. And then you can kind of duplicate your efforts a little bit. At what point do you remember seeing that kind of start start rolling along at the beginning of your program? Um, that's a great question because it's kind of gradual, you know. Um, now keep in mind the, the the whole the whole we were in was some deeper than UCLA, and and sure. Um, sure. Uh, and then not to mention the fact that uh, uh, you know. Uh, that, that that team make no mistake. I mean, as you're going down this path of of uh, singing the blues and the poor boy does good, keep in mind that virtually everybody on that roster had uh, scholarship offers from nearly all the conference. Okay, so let's start there. But um, I think that it, it, it becomes gradual and um, and. Uh, I, you know, there's kind of a little spurts here and there that things get excited about. Sometimes there's cancers in your locker room. You got to eradicate those. And the thing that becomes difficult about that is some of those, sometimes those guys are talented players and you're seeing what they can do physically. Uh, but what, what, no matter what they can do physically, um, uh, the destruction they do is far greater. So, you, you know, you have to try to identify and get rid of people hold you back too as well as elevating guys that uh, um, are you know are really pushing uh, pushing the cause and helping your effort all right thank you any other questions on the phone line for coach yeah hey coach it's Jessica McIntyre um, I just wanted to ask about Brandon Arcanado he has back-to-back -back 100 plus yard games um, it kind of surprised some people that he had such an emergence and I was just wondering what he did in this offseason at camp, what kind of work he put in to kind of get to where he is right now? Well, I'll be honest with you, I think Brandon was a late developer, and I think that he, uh, um, you know, because he's, he, he's taller, heavier, and stronger now than he ever was, and some of those things went beyond just uh, the offseason. Now, the offseason was a huge, huge part of it, is, and without his work and dedication, there's no chance whatsoever um, he'd be where he's at, but he came as a walk on and he was uh, short and skinny. And then, uh, but he worked hard and could always catch the ball and was sort of elusive. And then uh, continued to work, continued to work, but just had such a great attitude, great team guy. And then he's just gotten better and better and better. And somewhere in there hit a little bit of a growth spurt. And then, uh, so he's, uh, He's taller, thicker, and faster than he's ever been. And then, um, uh, anyway, so he's playing real well. But it, it was it was quite a path, no question about it. Thank you. And uh, have you had a chance to speak to Gardner Minshew after his first two games? Uh, we texted back and forth. But we're have all you seen any of the team? I've seen clips, you know, because I'm always working, but I've seen clips. And then, uh, and then uh, DirecTV's uh, didn't carry it or whatever this last time. So, um, you know, may have to find some entity that does carry it. Well, 
What do you think of the world picking up on uh, just the Minshew mania, the jock strap in the locker room story, everything about it? Well, I hope we don't end up, because this is a fashion comp, uh, conscious copycat society we have right now. Um, hopefully there's not a bunch of people walking the streets and Minshew jock straps, although I imagine Gardner uh, could have a signature line and laugh all the way to the bank with it. I think the av aviators and headbands are good. Um, um, but uh, no, he's great. At, and then as far as the mustache, he's just great at carrying a mustache because, you know, you know as well as I do, there are mustaches everywhere, but his is the one that counted, you know. Thank you, Coach. Anything else on the phone for Coach? Yeah, uh, Coach uh, Ben Bush, Los Angeles Times again. How, how surprised are you that UCLA is 3-12, and 12, 15 games into the Chip Kelly era? I don't really evaluate it. I don't evaluate anything really on UCLA other than if we play them. And we haven't played them for the last two years. And, and primarily, we're just trying to focus on how good we can be and how we can make our team better more than anything. Okay, back in the room. Did, did T. Martin show you a little bit more of what you're looking for from him? Saturday, yeah, yes. Yeah, he's been playing good. The last couple of games, he's been playing pretty good. You know, anytime he plays fast and excited, he, you know, he's pretty explosive. And uh, I, I really think most of the season he has, you know. Were you also encouraged by the, the play of the Cosmos? In. Do, you, do you foresee a scenario where you, where you, where you don't register him or Travion Brown this year? That's difficult to say. Uh, Travion's playing real well right now um, and has played a lot of snaps. Um, uh, Cosmos, uh, 12 plays, three tackles, fumble. How about that? So uh, that's, the, that's a better percentage than anybody had, you know? Yeah, his production per amount of play is is higher than anybody's on the team this last game. We bet, you know, we bet one thing, uh, and, and, you know, we try to avoid punting, but we got people to punt the ball better, you know. There was a video of you uh, dancing in the locker room inside a huddle after the game. How do you evaluate your dance dancing? I wouldn't call that dancing. I think that was, uh, you know, I mean, just, uh, that kind, of, kind of trying to quickly appease the masses and make it go away. I've never been much of a dancer. Um, I've been more of a um, walk in place person, um, depending what, who I want to impress, pretending to be interested, or else walking in place and being literally defiant as I did so. Um, but, you know, in PE class, during like they had a square dance session, I was the guy that was sent to sit on the stairs because they couldn't dance with me in there because I couldn't even effectively go through the motions and pretend that I was into it, you know? And, um, and you know, I wasn't a guy that got in trouble in, in, in P no matter what they were doing, but uh, they said, they said, with you, you go sit on the steps because we can't dance with you in here, you know? Anything else for Coach? Last chance on the phone for Coach. All right. Uh, coach, with this being the Pac-12 opener, a uh, question for you is if you got all 12 mascots from the conference and they met, which one would come out on top? And in terms of uh, mascots. If they what? If they all met, which one, and, and maybe got into a battle right out. Which one's coming out on top? Which one's what the kind last of battle? Stand? And not mascots like Butch T. Cougar, but like, Actual coos and Bruins, Huskies and Ducks, Beavers, all that. <clears throat> well, I'm probably the University of Montana. Uh, uh, well, the two best, of course, would be Montana and uh, LSU. Uh, what, what about the, what about the conference? Our conference. That's a good question. Well, first of all, what kind of mythical powers does the Sun Devil have? We've got to consider that. I'm going to say the Wildcats out. 
uh, the Trojan, is he, does he have a horse or is he on foot? Does he have a bow and arrow or just his sword? Uh, but Rowan definitely formidable. Um, uh, another bear up there, cow. Uh, the tree, I mentioned that tree's going to get chopped down. Um, the, uh, uh, it's unless we're going to go with the bird and somebody might get pecked or something, I don't know. And then um, the duck, the duck might lose interest and just fly away and get out of there, which may be good advice under the circumstances. Uh, the husky, no chance. Uh, the beaver, well, we'll see how long that beaver can hold his breath. Um, the uh, the ute, again, we're back to, uh, is he on horseback? Does he have a bow and arrow? Did he trade for a rifle? I mean, you know, because if that ute's got a rifle, there's some definite problems. And then, um, and, uh, and, you know, you'd have to get one of those Harry Potter activists to read up on how you kill a sun devil because there's a lot of uh, outside stuff there. Um, just as far as a beast alone, uh, a buffalo is going to be pretty hard to tangle with. I mean, a, bu a buffalo is utterly outstanding. Uh, did I leave any of them out? Uh, well, but Butch, Butch is going to have to be clear-minded and crafty. I mean, Butch will, Butch will find a way, there's no question. The Coog will find a way. Uh, Clear-minded and crafty, a combination of stay out of harm's way and, and, uh, and attack when you get your, uh, your chances or your openings. Anything else for Coach? All right. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. Well done.